my name's Kathy Miller and this week we're looking at how to make peeling paint using the hairspray technique. As paint ages it peels and it peels in a certain way on the exposed areas around window frames and on the sides. Um, it's worth having a look at photos and buildings of the real thing to see just where it does peel and how much and how small it is. This week we're looking at how to make peeling paint and I'm going to show you on this um, scale house and the areas that are going to be peeled are round these. Now it's unfortunately I've glued it on which makes it not that easy to handle. I would recommend almost doing this first then gluing it on in the future but what I need to do now is just paint this wood um, the correct colour. So it's just a bog standard acrylic paint, give it a good shake some of the new ones have got little balls in which makes it better. Put it out here, you can see it's just this beige colour and paint away. So there we go, just putting it along. I don't mind if a bit of the grey shows through. So there we go. It's quite a light colour for it to be flaking through. You could go a bit grey, a bit darker if you wanted, but I probably will put a wash on right at the end to bring everything together and that will just darken everything down. So I don't want to go too dark at this point in time. So our peeling wood under colour has dried and now we just need to put on a coat of hairspray. This acts as a resist. When you put the next layer of paint on, the um, underneath layer is very easy to get at. It kind of stops the paint sticking totally, but not so much that it falls off. So this is just extra hold, maximum hold, Tesco cheap hairspray, any cheap hairspray will do. But I don't want it all over here because it's slightly shiny. So I'm just gonna get a bit of um, scrap paper out of my recycling bin and just use it as a mask. Um, kind of a rough mask really. Nothing too fancy. You're going, that's nowhere near the right shape. And it isn't, but it's enough just to stop it soaking my um, coat. So I'm just gonna spray this and round here. There we go. Um, if you want even more resist, you can um, put on more and more layers, but one should be enough for this. A light coat of chipping. The more you put on, the easier it is. And it's worth saying that um, although I'm using hairspray, AK Interactive MIG products, all of these people now have chipping fluids and they have a light chipping fluid and a heavy chipping fluid. And you can buy those if you want a little bit more certainty. I like the, the way hairspray comes out, it's a little bit more uncertain, but some people obviously want to have, um, you know, a little bit more control. Leave them to dry till they're, till they're well dry. Um, we, you know, if you don't, then the next coat won't go on properly and it will cause problems when you come to lift it. So the next thing to do on the peeling paint is to actually put some paint on that we can peel off. Now, because we've done hairspray, we really need to do something that's easy to lift off that. So it needs to be a thin acrylic colour. And I'm going to do white in both cases because I don't want to have to paint off and mask the um, window frames and do them different. And all my yard buildings in all of my layout are white, which is very simple and easy. You could easily paint the trim in a different colour if you wanted. Um, a lot of fiddly masking if you want to spray it. And I do recommend spraying if you can, because otherwise, if you brush, you tend to bring the hairspray off underneath, which stops it as, and sort of acting as the resist that we need it to be. So to spray them now, I do really, I was resisting it, but I do need to put the masking tape on. Okay, right, out to the garage again to spray these. I use plain white Vallejo mixed with water and a drop of window cleaner just to let the two mix together better. I then hair dried it, quite frankly, because I was, wanted to get it done quickly and put in second thin coat. I hair dried again and put another thin coat on. Um, you probably don't need three coats, but these were a little thin, so I just wanted the extra coverage. It was looking a little patchy after two. So last night I sprayed the white paint on about three o'clock last night. I came back at 11 and I had a little go with the brush and it was starting to peel quite large chunks off. So I stopped and thought I'd let it set a bit more. And what if, if it gets too solid, 
You can always leave some water on it for a bit and it will soften back up. Acrylic paint is just a thin rubbery layer. And the problem is if you soften it too much, it comes off in great chunks and actually you want little bits to come off. So I'm just using some rather well, monkey water out my brush um, thing and I'm just rubbing this back and forth and you can see straight away um, it starts to lift the edges with just the action of the brush. And that's just what you're after. If you find it's got too tough um, and it's not coming off, then the alternative is to use a cocktail stick and you literally just um, go along with the cocktail stick. Now obviously that takes a bit longer and you may not want to, to do it, but it does come up with a really good technique and you can decide whether it's the top or the bottom edges. You can see here that whole section is moving because it's just got damp. This is subtle, if you're not careful, you can take a whole patch out and um, realistically paint is a small effect, it's not a big effect so you know think about how much you're going to take off and and way, where. It'll be on the raised edges so bits around window sills especially get a lot taken off because well, you know they've got a lot of elements on them. So I like to just do the edges and I find cocktail sticks one of the best things for this but I'm not going to do the eaves too much because this section here would actually be protected by the roof so it wouldn't peel as much. And if you look at a peeling um, side of a building, you'll often see a strip of quite nice paint just under the eaves where it's been protected from the weather. Now I'm just going to go around and peel a bit more at the bottom, which is hard to reach with the brush. And I do think these bottom sections would have a bit more peeling on them. So the last thing I do on my peeling paint is just to add a wash and it sits into the cracks and just brings them out a little. But I don't want it to be too dark a wash. Um, it's not like I want these to be really, really subtly solid. So what I'm gonna do is use um, this, which is a, it's a bit more shaking, is a MIG warm white wash. Now, it's just a gray. It's a warm gray though. If you look at it, it's, it's almost like pink. And um, it's a little too pink on its own, but the cold gray is a little too cold. So I'm just gonna put them on and it just adds a little bit of something into these sort of cracks. Now I'm going to let this dry and if I don't feel the back um, planks are quite right on the gaps, if you look, it's still very pale. If it doesn't look as, as nice as I'd like it to, then I may well go back and add a darker wash. So this is the peeled paint and you can see the lines in between are still a bit too light. I'm not totally happy with them. So I'm just going to take dark MIG wash. I'm not going to put a lot on and I'm going to take um, my brush and I haven't shaken it a huge amount and I'm just, and I'm, I'm literally going to let it run along the edges. I'm just going to put it along this edge and let it run along. And I don't really want it to be as dark as this. Um, but it will just run along and that's probably a bit too dark. I do it on this side as well. It will run along. And it falls along the um, crack. So you can just keep doing it and it will go along. Okay, and then we'll come back in a, in a second and take off some of this unsightly grey. So I'm going to let that dry, then I'm going to come away and take it all off. The other one I'm going to put with neutral, just to show you the difference when it's not quite as um, strong looking. And you can see which one you prefer at the end. Right, how to take these very hideous looking things and make them look better. Well, the magic ingredient is just some kind of white spirit. This is actually the MIG thinner for washes. And um, normally, um, you can use a brush, it can end up going into all the little things that you don't want. So I'm going to try it with a cocktail, um, cocktail stick, uh, cotton bud first and I'm just going to brush down and because this is the thinner it will take off any extra wash that you've put on and it magically just 
makes everything look a little better. Just going to leave that to dry and see if I'm happy with it. If I'm not, I can always come back, take a bit more off, add a bit more on. So looking at this one, I did it with a paler um, colour and you may not feel the need to do quite as much, but I am going to just go over it with a little bit of a brush just to, just to wipe down some of these bits where it's splodged a bit. So here's the final result on our peeling paint. You can make it as much or as little as you want, but it certainly gives that effect that the paint isn't quite as new as it could be. Is Mills Girl Cathy about to be rescued? Tune in and find out. but it's a long way up. Wow. How on earth am I going to get on there? Well, it's do or die. Nothing for it but to start. Hmm. Peeling paint. Hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would be nice if Mill Girl Kathy was here. I know where she's got to. I hope she's all right. I really do. I hope Mill Girl Kathy makes that long climb up to safety and perhaps to home in the spaceship. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling, or visit me on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week. <laughs>